Well, I'm going to have Deacon Macarola come just as he sits down. Yeah. <laughs> I thought I'd give him an opportunity to get back there and get the word in his hand and then come back. And uh, I appreciate the men that covered the pulpit in my absence. And uh, the Lord's blessed me with a, a, a wonderful staff of spiritual men and uh, just a wonderful staff of spiritual ladies in the Sunday school programs and the music programs and just... Uh, it, uh, I'm just a blessed man. So, amen, brother. Amen. Let us have it. <laughs> oh, good evening, everybody. Good All right, if you would, turn in your Bibles to Matthew chapter 24. While you're turning there, uh, I'd like to thank Brother John Hornsby for showing up tonight. <laughs> I was up here last night, and I was going through my message, and I got about halfway through it. And then he come walking in. He had a few things to do around here, so I stopped and helped him do what he needed to do. And he wanted to check the sound system. So uh, he said, Dave, could you go up there and say a few words so I could check the speakers? Well, instead of saying a few words, I just went through my whole message. So, <laughs> so that would probably be the last time he ever asks me. <laughs> All right, Matthew chapter 24. And I'd like to read from verses 21 and 22. For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time. No, nor ever shall be. And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. <clears throat> I would like to talk to you tonight about the coming storm. And if you would bow your heads and we'll have a quick word of prayer here. To... Heavenly Father, as your word tells us, there's a storm coming. And, and Father, we, we can hear the thunder, even today, we can hear the thunder. We can see the lightning on the horizon, Father. And Father, I'm just asking that you would just delay this storm for a while longer, Father, that we may, may let others know that, that they just come to realize that the only shelter they have from this storm, Father, is in the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and Father, I just... I just I just pray that they just come to realize that we just just help us to wake them up, Father. That that they just realize what is coming upon this planet, Father. And Father, I just pray that you just help me to deliver this message tonight, Father. We ask these things in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> there is a storm that is coming. A storm of such proportions that it staggers the imagination. A storm so catastrophic that it would not be possible for the man, mind of man to comprehend it. Thank you. It's not pleasant to preach a message or to hear a message of this nature. But I'm not here to please the crowd. I'm here to preach the word. Amen. When you think of some of the days of sorrow and heartache that have gripped this world in the past, days of bloodshed, and days of catastrophe, and to think it's going to be worse than any of this, and so bad that it will never happen again. 
It's called the Great Tribulation. And it's soon to come. There have been some dark days in the past. And it would be easy to list some of them. But it would be too morbid and too gloomy. But I would like to mention one. Jesus stood on the Mount of Olivet and looked upon one of the most beautiful buildings ever built. Herod's Temple in Jerusalem. It was built of white marble that glistened in the sun. It stood as a monument to Mosaic Law. Jesus said to his disciples, just hours before his crucifixion, that there would come an hour that not one stone would be left upon another. His words were fulfilled right down to the letter. Roman legions surrounded Jerusalem. They laid siege on it for many months. It was one of the most horrifying times that anyone had known. No food was allowed to go in or out of this city. During those months with Roman legions surrounding Jerusalem, 600,000 Jewish bodies were thrown outside the gates. Finally, when the day of conclusion came, 1,100,000 Jewish men, women, boys, and girls had died during Titus's siege of Jerusalem in 70 AD. Roman soldiers, angry with the stubbornness of the Jewish defense, slaughtered everything in sight. The soldiers heard that there was possibly gold in the mortar between those huge stones. Some of those stones were 94 feet long, 10 feet high, and 13 feet wide. They weighed many tons. They hooked many yokes of oxen to them and pulled them off. There were 162 marble columns that held up the porch that was 52 feet high. They were brought down one by one. Every stone was pulled as the soldiers tried to find the gold that was between the stones till there were no stones left, one upon the other. Fulfilling completely the words of Jesus when he said, not one stone shall be left upon the other. They ran a plow across the field where the temple had been. It's hard for us to imagine a carnage of that magnitude. I wish that I could say that men of wisdom, diplomats, or ambassadors could find a way out of the difficulties that this world finds itself in today. But it's not going to happen. There's a storm coming. There's a storm that I can't stop. All the preachers put together can't stop it. No president will stop it. No nation. No empire, no dynasty will stop it. That storm is coming because the Word of God tells us that it's coming. It's called the Great Tribulation. The tribulation that I'm talking about is of such magnitude that I don't have the words to describe it. But I'm going to try my best to do so. I've got to try and wake people up. 
I've got to try to wake a sleeping church up. I'm trying to wake a world up that has defied God for days without number. The Bible tells us in the sixth chapter of the book of Revelation of something that's coming. It gives us an account of what's going to happen. I'd like to say that it won't be long. It won't be long in coming because the world follows his master, Satan. Satan wants to be God. They're building more horrifying and more powerful weapons. The world today is physically able to destroy this planet completely. But it will not happen. Someone might ask, how do you know that? Because I know what the Bible says. Jesus Christ is not coming back to charred ruins. Jesus Christ is not coming back to a hydrogen cloud. He's not coming back to a dead planet with nothing left but skeletons and ashes. He's not coming back to a planet that's been melted by thermonuclear destruction. I believe he's about to say it's closing time and he's about to take over. God is aware of everything that's taking place on this planet and everything is on schedule. God knows exactly what's going on and there's a storm coming upon this planet. In the sixth chapter of Revelation, the Apostle John was given a picture of what is going to come. He didn't know when it would happen, but in the sixth chapter of Revelation, the Lord is speaking to him. He tells him of a white horse rider. That white horse rider will be the Antichrist. The Antichrist will come telling the world that he has the solution to all the problems of the world. He will have such power that the whole world will tremble at his word. War will be his God. He will conquer many by deceit. His ambition will be to take over the whole world. The problems of this planet today are such that humanity is almost begging for a man to solve their problems. The Bible tells us that following the white horse rider will be the red horse rider. The red horse which will symbolize war. I look at the United Nations and man's failed efforts to solve the problems of this world. It was doomed to fail from the start because God was ruled out of the United Nations in His charter drawn up from the very beginning. I would like to remind the diplomats and I remind the ambassadors Unless God builds the house, they labor in vain that build it. I wish I could stand here and tell you that man will somehow find a way out of the difficulties that he finds himself in. I believe America should be the strongest nation militarily on the face of the earth. I don't like to see my taxes spent for guns and bombs and bullets, but we have to face the world that is instead of a world that we would like it to be. There is coming a day when the factories that are building the nuclear weapons and the tanks will shut down and there will be no more war 
and no more armies, and no more navies, and no more weapons. I long for that day. But it will not come until the Prince of Peace comes back. And His name is Jesus. I believe there are people in this world that know the right. They know what to do. But they don't have the might. There is coming one that not only knows the right, but he has the might. And his name is Jesus. Over one million dollars a minute is spent on weapons in this world today. It's not going to get any better. It's going to get worse. Whatever peace we have right now, enjoy it. Because it's not going to last. There will be no peace. There is nothing but war ahead for this planet and for this nation. Because the Bible tells us so. On the heels of war will follow famine. The black horse. There will be famine of huge proportions. We in America don't know what famine is. Our problem is too many calories. Our problem is fat. There's a possibility that one day that will end. And it won't be by our desire. The black horse of famine and the terrible hoofbeats have already started in the world today. Most of the world today is starting to stare at the black horse. It's just beginning. The door is just slightly opening, but it's coming. A horror that defies description with millions and millions of people that will starve to death. John was then shown the pale horse, death and hell. Millions will die and millions will go to hell. Jesus said, great tribulation such as the world has never known before and will never know again is coming to pass because my Bible says it is. It's going to come with great fury all over this planet. We may ask ourselves, is it possible to escape it? No one in their right mind would want to go through such a thing as this. Jesus said in Luke chapter 21 and verse 36, Pray that you be worthy to escape these things that are coming upon this planet. You better get ready today for the coming of Jesus Christ. That's the most important thing on the face of this earth. The Bible tells us that there's a way of escape. The Bible tells us that we don't have to go through this horrifying hell. I believe it's coming upon this planet very soon. I believe the whole world is getting into position for the advent of the Antichrist. I believe the whole world is getting into position for war of huge proportions. The famine is already starting and will magnify a million times over, following on the heels of war, and death will follow that. <clears throat> the Lord told us that it was possible to escape it. It's possible that you and I and anyone in this world would not have to go through this hell. 
But if you don't do what this Bible says, there's a good possibility that you will be here when it starts and you will go through it. Jesus gave us some examples and I'd like to share them with you. He said, As it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the days of the coming of the Son of Man. They were eating, they were drinking, they were marrying until the day that Noah entered the ark. God saved Noah from the flood and Jesus can save you from this great tribulation that's coming. Only a few were saved then, just Noah and his family. I wish I could tell you that everybody that talks about Jesus is going to make it. I wish I could tell you that everybody that has religion is going to make it. But Jesus said, Broad is the way that leads to destruction, and many there be that go in. Narrow is the way that leads to life, and few there be that find it. They didn't believe Noah when he told them that a flood was coming. Just the precious few believe us today. Those people that think that we're nothing but some Bible thumpers. They better believe what this poor deacon is trying to say. Or they will still be here writing about the things I'm talking about. And it will be hell then. And they will remember the words this poor deacon has spoken. Thousands of people heard Noah. He preached and told them that a flood was coming. They laughed at him because they didn't want to leave the world of his pleasure. The world of a good time. A storm is coming. You can see the flashes of lightning on the horizon. The hands on the clock are pointing at two minutes till midnight. The whole world looks at that tiny little nation called Israel because it's God's time clock. God is saying, shall these bones live again? God is going to work out his plan. Those that try to take God out of America, those that say we shouldn't mix religion with politics, I'm sick of it. I don't know about religion, but we need to mix morality with politics. We need to mix God with politics. We better mix God with government. We better mix God with the Senate. We better mix God with the Congress. We better mix God with this nation because the only thing that's going to see us through is God Almighty. Amen. We need to get God back in our classrooms. The only thing that's going to keep the dope out of the halls is to get God back in the classrooms and the Ten Commandments back on the elementary and high school walls. America needs to come back to God. The future of this planet is not a godless, atheistic world. The future of this planet is not a planet without God. I want people to know this planet belongs to God. The Bible says, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. When Jesus Christ comes back, the nations of the world will fall at his feet and cry, holy. They say we can't mix religion with politics. 
They better start mixing something with politics. We better get God in it. Where once again, He is respected and loved. Where once again, this is one nation under God. I'd like to say something else while I'm up here. You might think I'm trying to mess with Washington. I'm not messing with Washington. I'm messing with those double-tongued hypocrites. That's who I'm messing with. Some of our senators don't have enough guts to spell God. In Washington, they say, we have to answer to either the Bible or to the Constitution. And I'm going to answer to the Constitution. I love the Constitution. But long after it's crumbled into dust, this book will still be alive and will still exist. Amen. Many of our senators haven't been to church in so long that they don't know that there are still millions of Americans that still believe in, in this book, Amen. that still believe in God, that still believe in righteousness, that still believe in morality, they still believe in prayer. It's not a shame to pray to God Almighty and to claim that this is one nation under God. There's coming a day when a teacher will be able to stand or a student in the public school systems of this nation and they will be able to bow their head and out loud say our Father which art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Before this storm comes, our children that have been raised, that know not God, they're going to learn that there is a God. They're going to learn that He has a Son called Jesus Christ. They're going to learn that His Son came from heaven, that he lived spotless and pure for 33 and a half years, and he died on a cross called Calvary. He shed his blood for our sins and rose from the dead the third day. I believe that America is tired of the permissiveness, of the filth, of the moral rot. They didn't believe Noah. We have an advantage today. We have had around 4,400 years of prophets and priests and preachers of righteousness. Jesus also said, as it was in the days of Lot, the angel told Lot and his family that he couldn't do anything until they got out before he destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. I believe Jesus will take us home before the storm comes. Those that are saved. I believe the trump is going to sound shortly. I believe angels are working right now to get us out of Sodom and Gomorrah. If you're not saved, you're going to be left. Time has just about run out. The door is almost closed. Don't get left behind. 
grab hold of that hand, a nail-scarred hand of Jesus Christ. Bow your heads. Lord, I thank you that whosoever will may come and drink of this water of life. I thank you that there has never been a soul that you couldn't save. And, and Lord, I, I thank you that there's never been a, a, a life that you couldn't change. And Father, I, I, Lord, I, I, we, we love you and we thank you and we, it, for all that you do, Father, dear Lord. And, and Lord, I just, I just pray that, that we'd be able to get this message out. Oh, Father, to, to just let others know that what's coming upon this planet very shortly. And Lord, we ask these things in the precious name of Jesus. Amen.